Hi, Bookish Besties. My name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Breeds. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. And if you were already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today, it is time to do my October TBR. <music> All right, everyone. So today we are going to do something exciting in that I'm going to be playing two TBR games. I will, of course, be playing the My Bad TBR game, which is the TBR game that I created based on Sorry. And then I will also be playing Spookopoly, which is the basically Halloween spooky version of Bookopoly, which is the TBR game that Becca from Becca and the Books created based on Monopoly. And even though she doesn't really play her TBR game monthly anymore, typically every single year she does a readathon based around the TBR game. And the last couple of years it has fallen in October and henceforth why she named it Spookopoly. And so I really enjoy participating last year and I wanted to go ahead and do it this year. So I will be doing the standard six draws for my TBR game and then I will be doing six rolls for Spookopoly. And of course those could increase if the boards are unkind to me. Now one of my biggest goals that I'm going to try to achieve with the prompts that I land on for either of the board games is that I'm going to try to pull as many books from my physical TBR as I can to satisfy these prompts. Now y'all know that my physical TBR at this point is bare bones. It's dwindling. I think it's like below 20 books at this point. But to be honest, I'm just sick of looking at them. Some of them have been on there for quite a while, definitely over a year, if not more. And I just kind of want to get them read and done and over with. So I am challenging myself to use as many books for my physical TBR as I possibly can. I will, however, give the caveat here. I will allow myself to change up the books that I read for these prompts, depending on what book of the month releases. Of course, as I'm filming this, I do not know what the October book of the month selections are going to be. And if I do decide to select any books for the month, you all know that I try to read those as they come in. And so if any of those books fits the prompts that I'm going to be landing on today, I will allow myself the flexibility to change those up. But in general, I really would prefer to prioritize the backlist books that have been sitting on my physical TBR for a while. I think that's it. I think that's all the housekeeping that I wanted to do. But of course, before we can get into the gameplay, I have to recap how I did with my TBR game in the month of October. So the very first prompt that I landed on for September's round of gameplay was to read a book set in a foreign country. And for this, I selected Someone's in the Attic by Andrea Mara. This was a September book of the month selection and so I knew that I wanted to go ahead and read it as soon as possible. It is set in Ireland if I remember correctly and I did successfully read that book. Then I landed on the prompt of random number generator. This is actually one that I did not satisfy. The book that I ended up selecting for this was These Tangled Vines by Julian McLean and honestly I really just didn't care to read it. I wasn't in the mood to read it and even though the synopsis sounded interesting to me like I was intrigued I just was not in the mood for the type of story. It was definitely going to be like a family drama set in Italy and I don't know it just was not what I was looking for and so I went ahead and just set it aside and I thought if I got to it by the end of the month I got to it and if I didn't I didn't. But what I plan on doing is rolling this over in October and you will see how I plan on fitting this into my TBR once we get into the gameplay. So I didn't end up satisfying this prompt but I do plan on doing a new random number generator selection and I'm just going to be removing these tangled vines from my TBR. Then I landed on the prompt to read a book that gave me summer vibes and for that I selected Crazy Stupid Bromance by Alyssa K. Adams. This is the third book in the Bromance book club series and I did read this. And then I landed on dice roll and what that means is I had to roll a die and then whatever number it landed on I had to go ahead and correspond that to something on my TBR and this ended up selecting Five Survive by Holly Jackson which I did read. Then I got my green into the safety zone and so since there are no prompts associated with those squares I had to go ahead and do a pull for my challenge cup and that gave me the prompt to read the next book in the True North series by Serena Bowen. That was Heartland which I did read and then the very final prompt I landed on was to continue a series and for that I selected Running Wild by K.A. Tucker which I did read. So overall, once again, it was a very successful TBR month. I managed to successfully complete everything but one, and I do plan on trying to complete that in October. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the gameplay. All right, everybody, it is time to play the next round of the My Bad TBR game. As you can see, we are very close to being done with this game. We only have two active pawns out on the board, and this green guy is actually in his safety zone. Now, as a reminder, last time I played, I eliminated the color tile card. Cards. So I'm just able to move these pawns as I see fit depending on what the card I draw is, what the prompts are, etc. Because it's going to get increasingly impossible to have moves if I'm using those color tiles. And really the goal is to finish this game either this round or in November because I will not be playing this in December for a very specific reason. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the six standard draws. We'll see how kind the board is to me and if I hardly have any books by the end of those draws I will continue to draw until I have more without further further ado, let's go ahead and start with draw number one. 
All right, so with a 10, I could either move forward 10 or backwards one, and it really wouldn't make sense for me to move backwards one since I'm trying to finish this game and this guy is safe and I don't want him outside of a safety zone. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip the board and we will move that yellow pawn 10. All right, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, debut author. So that means I either need to read a recent release by a debut author, or I need to read the debut of an author that could be already established. So I'm gonna have to think about that one. All right, so the very first prompt that I landed on was to read a book by a debut author. And for this, I'm actually going to read the first book ever written by Megan Golden, and that is a book called The Girl in Keller's Way. I realized as I was going through my TBR that I have almost read Megan Golden to zero. The only book that I had not yet read by her was her debut and I didn't actually know it existed. I thought The Escape Room was her debut and that is not the case. So I had thought that I had already read her to zero. So by reading The Girl in Keller's Way, I will have read her to zero. Now the only thing about this is that it seems like it's going to be hard to find physical copy if I love it. So that's going to be a bummer. But I have enjoyed basically everything that she's written. I've never really disliked anything. I really know nothing about this one. It says, when a body is found buried near the desolate forest road of Keller's Way, Detective Melanie Carter must identify the victim if she is to have any chance of finding the killer. That's no easy task with fragmentary evidence from a crime committed years earlier and a conspiracy of silence from anyone who might have information. The one person who may be able to help is Julie West. In a troubled marriage, Julie often jogs along Keller's way to clear her mind and escape the confines of her suffocating suburban life. Until one day, something happens there that shakes Julie to the core, making her question everything she ever believed about her life, her marriage, and even her sanity. So that ultimately is very vague. There is a body found in the woods. A detective has to solve of it and then there's somebody who might be able to help solve her case. So it sounds like there's going to be two different perspectives, one from the detective and one from this Julie West character. And I'm here for it. I pretty much trust Megan Golden and I do know that since this is her debut, she has likely improved greatly since this very first book. And so I'm going to give her a little bit of leeway, but I do believe that I will have a decent time with this. So I'm excited to jump into it. Okay, draw number two. All right, friends. Well, this is perfect because one, two, three, four, five, green is officially safe and no book will be chosen for that. All right. And then next, I actually was lucky enough to draw the card that was exactly what was needed to get green from safety zone into home base. So that means green is permanently safe. It cannot move any further. And it got me one step closer to finishing this round of gameplay. And of course, no book is chosen for that. All right. Well, I don't want to get my hopes up, but we could potentially finish this game this month. I cannot even believe it. That would leave November free for me to do whatever I wanted because I'm not going to start a new round until 2025. So let's see what we get with card number three. All right, so I got a two that really doesn't move me far across the board, but also it means I have to add another draw. So if I move this guy two, one, two, that is name or number. So I need to read a book with a name or a number in the title. Next, I landed on the prompt to read a book with a name or a number in the title. And for that, I'm going to select The Girl from Widow Hills by Megan Miranda, Widow Hills being the name of a place. Now y'all know my shaky history with Megan Miranda. It just seems like no matter what, I can't quit her. I always end up picking up her books. This was actually a book that I planned on unhauling. I had officially broken up with her. I wasn't gonna read her anymore. And then her newest release came out and it was a thriller that was featured on Book of the Month. And because of a project I'm doing, I had to get it and I had to read it and I loved it. It was like a 4.5 stars. It was her best book yet, in my opinion. It gave me everything that I wanted from it. And so it kind of renewed my faith in her. Now, do I think that this is going to be a new favorite? No, I don't. I think this is probably going to give me some of the same experiences I've had with her in the past, which has been very hit or miss. For the most part, I find a lot of her books to be just very mediocre overall, but some have been really fun, enjoyable four-star times. And so that's what I'm hoping this is. So I took it out of my unhaul pile. I put it back on my physical TBR, and now I'm finally going to read it. This says, Arden Maynard was just six years old when she was swept away while sleepwalking during a terrifying rain Storm. Strangers and friends, neighbors and rescue workers set up search parties and held vigils praying for her safe return. Against all odds, she was found alive, clinging to a storm drain. The girl from Widow Hills was a living miracle. Arden's mother wrote a book. Fame followed. Fans and fan letters, creeps and stalkers, and every year, the anniversary. As soon as she was old enough, Arden changed her name and disappeared from the public eye. Now, a young woman living hundreds of miles away, Arden has built a life as Olivia Mayer. But with the 20th anniversary of the rescue approaching, the media inevitably renews its interest. Soon, Olivia feels like she's being watched. She begins sleepwalking again. Late one she jolts awake in her yard only to find at her feet the corpse of a man she knows from her previous life as Arden Maynard. The girl from Widow Hills is about to become the center of the story once again. So I'm actually really, really intrigued by the synopsis of this one, and I really hope that Megan Miranda is able to do it justice. I'm gonna go into it expecting a decent time, and hopefully I end up really, really loving this. All right, draw number four. 
All right, well, that is not ideal because that is a backwards movement. So let's see, one, two, three, four, TBR veteran. That means I need to read a book that has been on my TBR for quite a while. All right, next I drew a four and that is a backwards movement and it landed me on the prompt to read a TBR veteran. And for that, I'm going to select Invisible Girl by Lisa Jewell. I absolutely adore Lisa Jewell. There has never been one of her books that I've actively disliked or hated. She's been a very, very consistent author for me. And because of that, she is certainly an auto buy author. I've had this book on my physical TBR for quite a while. It's just kind of been hanging around. There's been no reason why I haven't read it, just I haven't gotten around to it, and I know that I'm going to enjoy it. This says, Owen Pick's life is falling apart. In his 30s, a virgin, and living in his aunt's spare bedroom, he has just been suspended from his job as a computer science teacher after accusations of sexual misconduct, which he strongly denies. Searching for professional advice online, he is inadvertently sucked into the dark world of incel, involuntary celibate forums, where he meets the charismatic, mysterious, and sinister Bryn. Across the street from Owen live the Fours family, headed by Mom Kate, a physiotherapist, and Dad Roan, a child psychologist, Kate and Roan have always had a bad feeling about their neighbor Owen. There's something off about him. Their teenage daughter swears he followed her home from the train station one night. Meanwhile, young Sapphire Maddox spent three years as a patient of Roan Fours. Feeling abandoned when their therapy ends, she searches for other ways to maintain her connection with him, trailing him when he leaves his practice, and learning more than she wanted to know about Roan and his family. Then, on Valentine's night, Sapphire disappears, and the last person to see her alive is Owen Pitt. With vivid and unputdownable prose and plenty of disturbing twists and turns, Jewel's latest thriller is another haunting, atmosphere atmospheric stay up way too late to read book. So one thing that Lisa Jewell does really well in my opinion is she typically writes books with multiple different perspectives or maybe even multiple different timelines and she's able to weave them together pretty well. It sounds like you're going to have three different perspectives in here and I'm really interested to see how they kind of all tie together. So I am very very excited to get to this and see what Lisa Jewell is able to do with this story. Draw number five. One, two, three, four, five, six. That is choose pawn color. So that basically when I was using the color tiles, that meant that I was able to choose whatever color I wanted to move for the next time. I didn't actually have to draw a color tile and that's really no longer a concern, but I landed on it. So no book is going to be chosen. All right, next I drew a six and that landed me on the prompt to choose my pawn color. Now, typically, you know that when I play this TBR game, I don't have a choice in what color pawn I move. I have to draw color tiles to tell me, but since all of the colors basically have been in their home base and I really didn't have a choice, Choice. This prompt is kind of irrelevant at this point, but I landed on it and so no book is going to be chosen. Draw number six. Okay, we got a five. Let me go ahead and flip the board really quickly so you can actually see where I'm landing. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Red on the cover. So I need to read a book with red on the cover. All right, next I drew the number five and that landed me on the prompt to read a book with red on the cover. And for this, I think I'm going to be reading Shadow Heart by Meg Gardner. Now I chose this because this is the fourth and what I believe to be the final book in her Unsub series. It recently came out, I think last year and I wanna read it and get it done so I can be done with this series. I remember really really enjoying Unsub having a great time with it. I wasn't necessarily impressed with the second book. I do know that I enjoyed the third book enough that I wanted to go ahead and pick up the fourth book. I think it's going to follow her quest to kind of capture the serial killer she was following in the first book. So I think it's all finally going to come to a head and it's going to nicely finish out the series. It has read on the cover. It's going to work perfectly for this prompt and it's going to be one series that I can remove off my actively reading list. And then this should be our seventh and final draw. So let's see what we get. Okay, another six. All right, so let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so this guy is officially in his safety zone and that means I have to do a challenge cup pull. All right, then I drew a six and that got my yellow into his safety zone. And so that of course means I have to do a challenge pull and I'm really, really nervous about this because there really isn't a whole lot in here that I'm in the mood to read at this point. And I definitely am not going to be picking up any chunky fantasies. I just don't have the time or the bandwidth. So we are going to see how kind this is to me. I really, really hope that it's kind. All right, let's see. Let's see what we get. All right, I got it. <laughs> true North. What are the odds that the last time I did a challenge pull, it was True North and this time it is True North as well. This will actually finish the series as well because I only have one book to read in the main True North series and finish it up. And that means I will have finished two series in the month of October, which I'm very excited about. And I think this could help break up all of like the spooky thriller reads that I plan on reading in the month of October. So I'm literally only five spaces away from being able to complete this game and I want to keep going. However, the majority of the draws that I make at this point 
are not going to get me to move. So I need to decide whether or not I take a punishment for each time I can't move, which could get pretty exorbitant pretty quickly, or if I just let myself draw until I win. Okay, friends, we are gonna go for it. We are gonna see if we can finish this game right here, right now. So let's go ahead and see what I can do. Okay, that is an eight. I obviously cannot move eight. So what I think I'm gonna do is instead of having a punishment in terms of like a prompt I have to satisfy, I think for each card that I draw that I can't actually move, I think I'm going to increase the books that I have to read for the month by one, if that makes sense. All right, so this next draw, I drew an eight and I found myself in a predicament, right? Because the yellow is in his safety zone, which is where I want him to be, but that gives him limited movements. He can only move forward a couple of spaces or even backwards four if I got a backwards four but he could not move forward eight. So I had to figure out what I was going to do about that. And in this instance, rather than giving myself punishment prompts that I had to satisfy, I instead decided that I was just going to go ahead and add books to my TBR for every single draw I made that I couldn't move. So obviously I couldn't move forward eight. And so what I've decided to do for this draw is because I know that I'm playing Spookopoly and I'm likely going to be landing on prompts that I don't already have books to satisfy that I'm using for my TBR game, any one of those books that I select for Spookopoly can work for this. So I'm gonna hold off on some selecting something right now. And once we've gone into Spookopoly, I will know some of my options for satisfying this prompt. All right, let's try again. Oh, she's upside down. Well, I am happy to say that that didn't take long because we have one, two, three, four, five. And we have officially finished this round of gameplay after almost two years of playing. We are done, my friends, and it will be time to start a new round in the new year. All right, everybody. And then the most exciting draw happened. I drew a number five and that was exactly the number of spaces that I had left to get yellow into his home base. So I successfully got yellow into his home base and I officially won this round of gameplay and I will be picking it up again in the new year. But finishing the game does come with a little bit of a surprise. So you'll have to stay tuned until the end of the video to find out what it is. And obviously no book is going to be chosen for this. All right. And now it is time to go ahead and jump in to playing Spookopoly. All right everybody. Now it is time to roll for Becca's Spookopolathon. I'm going to do the six standard rolls unless of course I get doubles and then it's going to be more. I'm just going to use one of my little pawns for my TBR game and we're going to start here on go. Now of course I'm going to try to double up as much as humanly possible so I hope that these prompts are kind to me but we are going to see and I do have the community chest as well as the chance cards right over here on the side just in case I land on one of those. All right and I have my dice here but I have a feeling they're going to go all over the place so let's see. Okay, that is a five and a one, so that is a six. One, two, three, four, five, six, passed. All right, the very first roll gave me a six and that landed me on the prompt of past. And that basically is to read a book that I should have already read by now or a book that has been on a prior TBR. And so I'm gonna kind of twist this a little bit. And I don't necessarily have a book that's been on a prior TBR that I should have read. However, I do have that prompt from last month's TBR game, the random number generator that I should have satisfied last month. So I went ahead and did another random number generator. I went to my Goodreads want to read shelf and this actually actually landed me on The Situationship by Abby Jimenez. This is a very short novella that Abby Jimenez just released. I think it is maybe only like 30 pages long and it is meant to be Doug's love story. And if you've been reading her series, you will know who Doug is. He is a very lovable character and we all wanna see him get his love story. And if I understand correctly, his love story is actually with the best friend from Just for the Summer. And I'm really interested to see how that all goes about. I really wanna see both of them get together. This doesn't have an audiobook, of course, because it is so short. So it's something that I'm going to have to take the time to read physically, but I don't think it should be a problem. I think it should be a quick and easy read and it's going to work really well in helping me finish all the other books in my TBR because it is so short. So for this one, I opted to satisfy a prompt I should have satisfied previously. And that was random number generator from last gameplay. All right, roll number two. All right, that's a one and a two, so a three. So we have one, two, three, and that is future. All right, then I drew a number three. It didn't get me very far, but it did move me from the past to the future. And the prompt for this is to read a book that you have been saving for a future time, the right time, also known as a rainy day book. Now this is hard for me because I don't necessarily have books that I save for the right time. However, there are books that I am intimidated to read for whatever reason, and I'm usually never in the mood to read those because I am so nervous. And I do have one book 
book on my physical TBR that will kind of meet that. And that is Homefront by Kristen Hanna. This is a somewhat older release from Kristen Hanna. It was published back in 2012 and it is definitely one of her more contemporary releases. She has a whole contemporary backlist prior to her getting more firmly rooted in historical fiction like with The Nightingale and The Women. And I don't necessarily plan on reading the entirety of her backlist but I do plan on reading some of her more recent contemporary releases including this one. I found this one I believe it was on Book Outlet and I snagged it and it came and it's been just sitting around because I know that this is absolutely going to break my heart. This is definitely going to be a harder hitting fiction story and so that's kind of why I've been putting this off because I don't know if I'm emotionally ready to read it. This says, like many couples Michael and Jolene Zarkadis have to face the pressures of everyday life. Children, careers, bills, chores, even as their 12-year marriage is falling apart. Then a deployment sends Jolene deep into harm's way and leaves defense attorney Michael at home unaccustomed to being a single parent to their two girls. As a mother Jolene is agonized to leave her family but as a soldier she has always understood the true meaning of duty. In her letters home she paints a rose-colored version of her life on the front lines shielding her family from the truth but war will change Jolene in ways that none of them could have foreseen. When tragedy strikes Michael must face his darkest fear and fight a battle of his own for everything that matters to his family. At once a profoundly honest look at modern marriage and a dramatic exploration of the toll war takes on American military family home front is a story of love loss heroism honor and ultimately hope. So yes that sounds very very heavy and I'm going to have to kind of like brace myself for it and so this is definitely one that I really need to read. I really need to get it off my TBR because there's never not going to be a day when I'm not intimidated to read this book. So we're going to use this one. All right roll number three. All right that's a four and a two so that's a six. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, we landed on Bonfire. That's exciting. All right, and next I rolled another six and that landed me on Bonfire. And that was to read a potential unhaul or a book that you're interested in, but you're not sure if you're going to like. And for that, I've selected A Winter in New York by Josie Silver. I got this one from Book of the Month last December because I really enjoyed Josie Silver's 2018 release called One Day in December. However, we all know how I feel about romance and what it takes for me to actually love a romance. I'm a very different reader than I was in 2018 and I don't know if 2024 me is going to appreciate this book from Josie Silver but it has been hanging around. It's one of the only backlist book of the month titles that I still currently have on my TBR and I think it's time for me to just get it done to read it and see if I actually really do like it. I just need to go ahead and get it done and like I said this will be a break from all of the other heavier darker stuff that I am reading throughout the month. All right rule number four. We have a five. Let me switch this board really quick because I don't think you can see very well here. One, two, three, four, five. Oh no, feed scroll. Okay, so that basically means I have to scroll through some type of feed and the first book that pops up that I actually have on my TBR, I've got to read. So that makes me just a tad nervous. All right, then I rolled a number five and that landed me on feed scroll. And y'all, this actually ended up being really difficult for me. At first I went to Goodreads and I scrolled for at least a minute, just kept scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and nothing I was coming across was any anything that I had on my TBR that I wanted to read. Nothing that was on my radar at all. And so then I went to Instagram and the problem with Instagram these days is that it's kind of turning into TikTok and that people are relying more on reels. So all of my feed is just filled with reels and it's not as easy to just quickly scroll and find a book. So I didn't immediately find anything but then luckily Aoife from Pretty Purple Polka Dots had shared her TBR. I believe it was for October and she had a book on there that was actually recently sent to me very kindly from my friend Jarrett. I was so surprised to receive a gift from her in the mail and this book was included and it was something that I wanted to get to as soon as possible and that is The Midnight Feast by Lucy Foley. Now Lucy Foley and I have a turbulent history. I read the guest list and I thought it was okay. It was nothing mind-blowing but it was certainly entertaining right and then I read The Paris Apartment and I was bored for like the vast majority of that story. I really didn't like it at all and then we got to the twist and I appreciated it. So I'm definitely willing to give Lucy Foley one more chance and if I'm not really blown away by this or if it's not more of a solid read than the other other two. I don't think I'm going to continue with her as an author but this did come out. It's been getting a lot of praise and I wanted to go ahead and give it a try. This one says it's the opening night of the manor and no expense small or large has been spared and yet just outside the manor's immaculately kept grounds an ancient forest bristles with secrets. The local community resents what they see as the manor's intrusion into the local woods and attempts to privatize the beach and small skirmishes have erupted on the edges of the property between locals and the staff and the whispers keep coming about an old piece of pagan folklore. The night birds an avenging force that can be called upon to make right wrongs that elude the law, though surely everything at the manor has been done above board. On the Sunday morning of opening weekend, the local police are called. There's been a fire. A body's been discovered. Something's not right with the guests. What happened on the grounds of the manor the past 36 hours? And who or what is the cause? So I'm really, really intrigued by this. Like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a shot. At the very least, I expect to have a good fun time, if nothing else. So thank you once again, Jarrett, for sending this book my way. And thank you so much to Eva for putting this on your TBR so that I was able to satisfy the feed scroll prompt. All right, number five. 
Okay, I don't know if you can see this, but this is a six and a four, and that is 10. So once again, let me switch the board. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Awesome, okay, I have to do a dice roll roulette. And basically the number on the die is going to correspond to the page count. All right, and then I rolled a 10 and that landed me on dice roll roulette. So basically I had to roll two die and Becca has created this table that tells you the page number that you need to find for the book you're going to read based on what you roll. Now, full transparency, I did this once and I got a five and that page count was 225 to 274. And I had literally nothing on my physical TBR or my Goodreads to read shelf that would fit this. I do not tend to read shorter books. I only tend to read on the longer side. So anything like above 300 or so pages. So I did roll again and I got a number eight. And this time I needed to find a book that was between 375 and 424 pages. And for this, based off of what Goodreads says, The Spell Shop by Sarah Best Durst will satisfy this prompt. Now, the only reason why I'm selecting this book, it is going to be one of the next reads for the Bookworm Bitches Book Club, which is a book club that I moderate over on Goodreads. And now y'all know that this is not something that I would typically read because it's very much a cozy fantasy and those typically do not work for me especially if they are more historical in nature like I recently read The Honey Witch and I didn't really care for it at all. I'm absolutely going to give The Spell Shop a try. I've heard absolutely nothing but amazing things about that book and so I want to give it a fair shot and if I don't like it I don't like it. All right and then this should be the last roll unless I roll doubles. That's a three and then we have one two three Three. Oh, community shelf. Okay, perfect. Because I already know that one of these prompts is going to be for my own TBR game. She did say that since the community shelf cards are supposed to be prompts, that if you are participating in another readathon or what have you, you are able to use those prompts for these cards. And since I play my own TBR game, I went ahead and used the prompts that I landed on for that for these. So I have them right here. And let me just draw one. <laughs> debut author. All right, that works. All right, and then the very final roll was Community Shelf, which is very kind because I ended up putting all the prompts that I landed on for my TBR game on the Community Shelf cards. And so I knew that if I pulled one, I was going to have one of the same prompts that I had already drawn. I drew debut author. And of course, we are going to read that book, The Girl in Keller's Way from Megan Golden. So that is one less book that is being added to my TBR. All right, everybody, that is it. That is my October TBR. A little bit intimidating in some ways, just because there are some books on here that I'm not entirely sure I'm going to be in the mood for or that I'm going to enjoy, but we are going to give it a good fair shot. If you are participating in Spookopoly, please comment down below or if you've read any of the books that I have on my TBR, please comment that down below and let me know what your thoughts are. Or if you made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty, go ahead and leave me some kind of food emoji in honor of the Midnight Feast by Lucy Foley. Hi friends, editing Brittany here. So you remember how I said a little bit earlier in the video that I needed you to stay tuned for a little bit of a surprise that I had for you? Well, guess who forgot to actually talk about the surprise at the end of the video? I completely completely forgot all about it and just proceeded as if it were a normal TBR video. It's just par for the course at this point with my channel. Now you might not remember this, but back when I originally started this round of gameplay, I said that once we finished this round, once I got all of the colors into home base, I was going to do a little bit of a celebration. And so that is what we are here to do today. I want to do a little bit of a thank you. A thank you for watching me play the TBR game. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for supporting my channel. So I'm going to give somebody an opportunity to win a book or so from their wish list. And really there are only two main rules. First, of course, you have to be a subscriber to my channel and you have to be a public subscriber to my channel. If you don't have your subscriptions public, I'm not going to be able to verify that you are a subscriber to my channel. And then the second rule, in order to enter the giveaway, you have to leave me a comment down below with a question that you would like me to answer in an upcoming Q&A that I plan to do as part of my book miss videos. If you are new to my channel, I try to participate in book miss every year where through December 1st through December 25th, I post post one video a day and it's typically formal sit down videos, not vlogs. I do a couple of vlogs here and there, but it's not vlogmas. And so as part of those sit down formal videos at this time, I do plan on doing a Q and A. Now you can make this a bookish question or it does not have to be a bookish question. You can ask me any type of question you want. Of course, keep it appropriate, keep it respectful, but I'm happy to answer any questions that you might be curious about that are book related, about my life, family, what have you. But your entry into the giveaway is going to be a question. And then what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the giveaway open for about two weeks. And then after two weeks, I will go ahead and do a random comment selector. And whoever's comment is chosen will be the winner of the giveaway. And that will be featured in an upcoming video that will come out near the end of October ish. Now, of course, I'm going to announce your name in the video and I will go back and reply to the comment that you left on this video, but it will be up to you to contact me via email to go ahead and claim your gift. And if I do not hear from you, 
I'm going to have to select another winner. So again, be a public subscriber to my channel and then comment down below a question that you might be interested in me answering in the Q&A that I plan to do during Bookmas. And then in a couple weeks, I will announce the winner and then send you a book or so from your wish list. So again, thank you so much to everybody who has been with my channel, who's been watching my TBR games, who has been supporting me for the last several months. I truly, truly appreciate it. And I hope to see so many of you participate in the giveaway. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I typically post two videos a week, one on Wednesdays, one on Sundays, and I would love to connect with you in any of those future videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which you can always find linked down below along with any books featured in the video. Until next time, y'all. Bye.